Hello everyone. I'm going to be reading to you from a transmission of Thoth given to me in around 2004. It's about the Yushuda, which he calls the Christos Whirlwind. The function, the movement of emptying and filling the cup or containment field, of whirling or spinning light codes, creating CRPs, which are critical rotational positions, in the axis of the crystalline particles of the planet. This whirling motion is stimulated through what could be called cosmic Christ consciousness. But first, let's go back to the beginning of the story. Star suns are what Thoth calls the living lights. They are, in essence, each composed of many trillions of angels and other shining ones, which have been given various names by the religions of the world. I wish to pause in the reading for a moment for a little more explanation of what he just stated there. The star suns, that is, all the stars in our own solar sun, do not have angels living inside them. It is a frequency, a vibration of angelic accord, so that the angelic field is not something in time space, but it projects into that realm. And the projection arrives in all the star suns of the galaxies, the universe, the universes. To continue with the reading, the pulsing energy from the central sun of this universe streams through the cosmos. All particles of matter respond to the sacred touch of the pulse. This response is an awakening of being. It is not consciousness, not yet. It is a form of attraction to consciousness. The divine song of matter to its maker in this instance to the central sun of this universe, creates paths of resonance that, in more complex formations of matter, become vessels for consciousness. As souls incarnate into matter, they create sheaths of response to the cosmic pulse. The initial sheaths are not conscious, but sentient. They respond to stimulus, but do not ponder or perceive why they do. However, due to the specific nature of the human being, it develops centers in the body that secrete chemicals which stimulate the brain to receive a sophisticated awareness of self, environment, and other. Different stages of humanity have been on different levels in percentage of what part was conscious and what part sentient. The stream of soul incarnations into the developing natural species of human that we see as the primitive first man was mostly sentient. The incarnating humans from what Thoth refers to as the solar races and the Nephilim, two different arrivals of humans, came here already endowed with a full set of consciousness. There were some other smaller human groupings hailing off-planet as well, also fairly conscious. Now I wish to pause again for a moment. There are several things I want to address here. There are various levels of consciousness, obviously, and at the very lowest levels we have those who are simply focused with pinpoint determination on selfish agendas. They have no true spiritual consciousness. They have no self-realization. They are all about the outer needs being fulfilled in their own little world. But that is a form of consciousness. So I just wanted to qualify the word consciousness in the whole spectrum. And the other thing is that animals are conscious and even plants are conscious. They don't have the type of consciousness the plants don't that we would recognize. Animals do, to a degree. But again, there are levels of consciousness. So 
an animal, a plant, is very spiritualized consciousness, but it is of, of a limited understanding of its outer circumstance. That does not mean that it is not connected spiritually to the God pulse. It feels that connection and it responds to it. To continue with the reading, the Christ consciousness, however, is a sheath of response to source that touches into and yet goes beyond location, i.e. universal central sun, radiating in response to its own beauty as a reflection of all. This is the Christic ray that penetrates and creates the Christic sheath in every human being. Even those humans whom we view as demonic incarnate contain the Christic sheath. However, for them, it is locked away in a chamber they have spun of their own devices. But it is still there. Yeshua, the Christed master, whose Christic sheath encompassed his whole being, looked at no one without seeing and experiencing their Christ self. So now, forward again to the Yushuda. This is a natural dynamic which emanates from the central sonatoma of all planets that contain incarnated souls which have evolved as a world consciousness to a certain degree of evolution. The Yushuda projects out from the center of the planet, being called by the central sun of the galaxy, summoned further by the central sun of the universe. As this dynamic moves like a giant clock in sync with the movement of lunar and solar shells of the planet, it collects the dew of Christ align, sparks from the souls of the planet into its cup or containment field. The stem of the Yushuda feeds these sparks down into the inner earth sun atoma. They are then sent outward from the earth's atoma back into the cup reborn with new light programs and poured back like rain from glorious thunderclouds into the human soul spectrum once again. The Yushuda is the primary mechanism for what we call ascension. Through its receiving and pouring out, it is the grail of our first and final hour on this planet and all in between. In conclusion, I wish to read to you from an unpublished manuscript I wrote probably in 1972 or 3. It is entitled Christ in the Earth. At the time, I would not have known about the two souls of Yeshua or Jesus. That was given to me, I believe, in the early 1980s. When I was writing, these things, it wasn't automatic writing, but it simply flowed through me like water, through my mind, through my heart, and through my hands. And so here's the quote from this manuscript. In the book of Kuku, a Meruvian, I would say Lemurian, book of a science called Agamen, a science blending chemistry, alchemy, and spirituality. This was written. In water is born the seed of Ra. It rises and becomes the seed of man. In water shall be born all things of Ra, uh, and of Churu and Olim, and all the gods of Ra. And I have a note here that says, the references to Churu and Olim are dictating two separate workings of the one god Ra. Gods of Ra are the forces of God. That's the end of the notation. And I continue with the saying, in the act of baptism, man was accepting his sin as being earthly and therefore like a skin to be cast off, revealing the true beauty of the soul. In his accountings, Jesus wrote, as man tears away that which is God's, he tears away that which is man's also for both stride in the same shadow. 
water and fire descend upon man and baptize him in the stroke of eternity. Now I say Jesus wrote, in this Christ in the earth, I have what is being claimed as a, uh, a journal, I would say, of Yeshua's, in which he did write certain things. And well, let's read a little bit more here. And so the baptism of Jesus Christ, the initial sin of Adam, was purged forever, and the perfect merging of the soul of Jesus and the Christ consciousness he bore was completed. Not since his incarnation as Adam had the soul of Jesus been given a sacrament by God. Now I want to stop for a moment. That would have been the Osiris soul. See, I didn't know about the pure soul. But as the forces of Christ were submerged into the elements of the water, a chemical response was activated that caused all forces to be redirected through the body of Jesus. At the instant of his baptism, he became the channel of all forces, the link in the chain of energy spilling toward the universal consciousness of God. Through this link, we also may become immersed in the flow leading to God. Not in believing firstly that the man Jesus was the Son of God, but in becoming aware of the Christ consciousness, the seed within us that is capable of total perfection. In his accountings, Jesus stated, as water reflects the light of heaven, so the soul of man reflects the face of God. The Illumined Assembly of the Christos is a gathering of souls incarnate in this planet who anchor the Christic energy into the earth by holding the Christic etheric patterns of crystalline light geometry in sacred presence within their matrix. There are 144,000 of these souls maintaining this presence at all times this being the number of nine fullness within the divine atom. The members of this assembly, or Archeos, reside within the planet and upon its surface. Those living upon the surface, for the most part, dwell in quite remote regions, and those within the interior of the earth reside in the natural hollow of the planet. 